Hello, and welcome to James Lewis's Express Lane, where we'll get you now as fast as possible. NFL Power Rankings time! I love talking about football. I'm gonna start off with, yes, Vikings win against the Cardinals. But it's a win, thank you. <sighs> Alright, past that. Starting off with number one, the Rams. I thought about making them number two behind another team. Because they barely beat the Broncos. Barely beat them. But the Broncos defense is still great. Had the offense for the Rams slowed down a little bit? Maybe. But it could have been just part of the flow of the game. Or the defense was stuffing them. Ugh, poor Case Keenum. It's not like they're getting blown out week in week out. Like they keep the game close usually and then... But it's the Rams. Like, dude, don't feel bad about losing to the Rams or the Chiefs. They're the Rams and the Chiefs this year. They're doing pretty damn good. The other teams, yeah. All right. Now, the team I thought about replacing the Rams at number two, the Patriots. They start off slow every year. Again, last year, 2-2. Two and two, Ended up 13-3. and three. Then they pick up the pace and steamroll through their opponents. That's what they do. They beat the undefeated and should continue to do so. Should be just marching forward, beating their opponents as they figure out their season, figure out their team, figure out this second stringer, that third stringer. If that guy gets her, we can plug this guy in there. And with Josh Gordon being able to pull off two defenders from the other players, that's going to be huge. It's I already said this before and I'll say it again. It's just like when they had Randy Moss. Randy Moss had a crap tackler year. He got, what, 500 yards, six touchdowns? Oh, no. Everyone else around him looked like a Hall of Famer. That's going to be what it's like with Josh Gordon on this team. Josh Gordon will be lucky if he gets 500 yards and six touchdowns. But everyone else around him is going to be open. Everyone else around him is going to have single coverage. Rob Gronkowski is going to be laughing his way into the end zone. As, oh, single coverage. Stiff arm. Walking to the end zone. It's just what it's going to be. Although, short of injury. Injury obviously changes everything, no matter what, for a team. Look at the 49ers. Went from, we're going to the playoffs. We might even be in the Super Bowl, too. Yay! We might get two wins this year. If they're lucky. Mm -hmm. Chiefs. Not too big of a fall. They lost to the Patriots. This, for me, was a 50-50 game where, yeah, the Chiefs are on fire, the Chiefs are steamrolling through, but it's the Patriots. Sheesh. So it's not too, it's not like, oh, they lost to the Browns or anything, or they lost to the Bills. <clears throat> you hear that, Vikings? No, they lost to the Patriots. For them, though, the offense was still on fire. The offense was still going out there throwing touchdowns. It was the defense that couldn't keep up. If the Chiefs get a key piece or two at defense, these teams meet in the AFC playoffs, probably end with a different result. But until that happens, like if they're trying to get Earl Thomas, and then Earl Thomas got hurt. The Raiders are trying to trade away Amari Cooper and their top safety, but I don't think the Raiders would trade their top safety to the Chiefs because, you know, enter division rivals and all that. So they're going to have to look somewhere else to get that key piece. Team that was on by this week at number four, the Saints. They should come back stronger, that extra week to rest up. Because, no, it's not just major injuries they'll slow you down. It's the minor ones. It's the, my, these two fingers hurt, so I couldn't get the ball very well, like I normally would, but it's not enough to keep me, you know, sidelined. Or my ankle tweaks a little bit when I try to make my cut. So instead of you no know, making the cut and getting up the hole and getting six yards, I just run into the line and only get a yard. So that extra week off, they heal up, should come back, not just as good as they were, but better. Now, starting at five, here's where things start to get tricky. There's a lot of four and two teams. Some teams that may go, what? How did you get here? And other teams that aren't a surprise, like, not the Ravens. They're four and two. But they lost to the Browns. I was thinking of maybe putting the Chargers up there because they're four and two, but one of those wins is over the Browns, so really they're three and two. Dolphins, they did just beat the Bears, 
but that was only after Cleo Mack hurt his ankle. Before that, the offense couldn't do anything because Cleo Mack was back there harassing them. Every every play, just hike, and here's Cleo Mack. Hike, here's Cleo Mack. Then he had it, and then he hurt his ankle, had it wrapped up. If Cleo Mack doesn't get hurt, Dolphins lose. So I just I just can't put him there. So at number five, I have to go with the Bungles. They lost a tough one against the Steelers. The Steelers, like the Patriots, tend to start slow and then pick up steam. Getting a bye week to rest up. And the Steelers get Le'Veon Bell back. Expect the Steelers to end up a lot higher on the list next couple of weeks. Because right now we haven't gotten to them yet. We're at five and no mention of the Steelers because they're three, two, and one. They tied against the Browns. Sorry, guys. One of my favorite plays during that game was... Well, I think it was a two-point conversion. They hiked the ball, like, directly to Ben Roethlisberger's outstretched hand. He's like, just, hike. Not even a second. Out of his hands. Tight end grabs it. Falls in the end zone. Just amazing just how quick that play was. There was no three-step drop. There, was, there wasn't even a one-step drop. It was literally done. You couldn't have counted to one second before that ball was out of his hand. That's a great trick play that I'm sure. How would you defend against that? The ball was out of his hand in less than a second. Amazing. So yeah, with Le'Veon Bell coming back after a bye week, expect the Steelers to start shooting up this ranks. But before we get to them, at number six, the we'll go with the Ravens. Defense wins championships, but they lost to the Browns. Can you win the North if you can't beat the Browns? Any given Sunday, I guess. Now they face the fresh and well rest of the Saints next week. If they beat them, you can erase the failure of losing to the Browns. If they lose, drop. Next, number seven, the Chargers. The offense has always been good. Every year, the offense is good. Phillip Rivers is good. They've had Hall of Fame running backs partnered with him. And they've done nothing with it. Part of that's their defense. Part of it's injuries. Part of it's the coaching. The best defense while they've had Phillip Rivers was maybe mediocre at best. So can they continue to string together wins? They face the Titans next week. And well, Titans are dominant one week, suck the next. If they get the dominant Titans, they lose. If they get the sucky ones, they'll win. Now at number eight, surprise, Steelers. This is not based off of the record. This is based off of the fact that they're getting a bye week so they can rest up from minor injuries and two. They're getting Le'Veon Bell back. James Conner did okay. James Conner went out there and did a commandable job. He's not Le'Veon Bell. On a play where he makes a cut and gets an extra couple yards, Le'Veon Bell will make that cut a second sooner, be through that hole, gone. Touchdown. James Conner will make the short cross, get the catch, get tackled. No, hey, we got four yards. We needed three. We got four. We got a first down. Le'Veon Bell will make that cut, catch the ball with one hand, twist around the defender, gone for a touchdown. So yeah, Steelers are coming, people. You better watch out. Now, what do we do for 8, 9, and 10? Three-way tie. The Bears, the Packers, the Vikings. The Bears are at 600, so they still lead the North because Vikings and Packers are at .583. The Bears just lost to the Dolphins. That was because they lost Claire Mack. But the fact that, well, they didn't lose him. He just got hurt, so he wasn't 100%. The fact that Cleo Mack not being at 100% was the difference between win and lose. Oh, shit. Like, it happens in the NFL where one player, it's usually the quarterback, though. It's usually the quarterbacks out there were 13-3, and three, maybe 14-2. and two. Oh, no, he's hurt. He's out for the season. Yay, we'll be lucky if we go 2-14. and 14. So you have that. But in this case, it's with a defensive player, Cleo Mack. Where if he's healthy, 100% out there, he's in the backfield as soon as the ball is. He's hitting the quarterback. He may not get the sack, but he's putting pressure on the quarterback. Quarterback throws a little bit too soon, or he throws to a guy who's a little too covered. Interception. Because Cleo Mack was going to come down and kill him. And that's not when he's no actually just crushing the quarterback, causing a fumble, 
pin it up and run it for it back for a touchdown. So it's just uh, if Mac gets back to 100%, they play the Patriots next week. If he's 100%, if he can put pressure on Tom Brady, if he can make Tom Brady throw the ball a second too soon or a throw to someone who's a little too covered, the Bears could win. The Bears could beat the, the Lions beat the Patriots. Why not the Bears? But if his ankle keeps hurting him, if Mr. Bisky can't make that play here, if he can't make that throw there, they're probably going to lose. Which will open things up for the Vikings. The Vikings are facing the Jets. This could be a trap game like it was with the Bills. Oh, the Bills, they're terrible. And we lost. The Jets, they're terrible. They lost to the Browns. Hopefully, we do what the Browns did and we beat them. The Peckers are on bye week, so not much to say about them. But a bye week, extra week of rest, extra week to come back from minor injuries. Now that twinge in your pinky so you can't get the ball. That twinge in your knee so you can't make the cut. Those get healed up. You're going to be in for a lot of it in the NFC North when the Packers come back and if they're healthy. Aaron Rodgers, he keeps getting hit because he has no O-line. Because he has all the money. They got to play the Bears again. Cleo Mack gets back there, hits him again, hurts him again. Goodbye Packer season. Now finally, at 11, the Dolphins. They finally beat a good team. Either the team lost their best defensive player. He had to wrap it up like a mummy for crying out loud. When they play bad teams, they win. When they play good ones, they lose. Or in this case, get lucky. Some might take luck over skill, but in the NFL, you can't rely wholly on luck. Hell, the Colts can't even rely on luck, and he is their quarterback. Excuse the pun. But lastly, number 12, at 3-2, the Redskins. After being humiliated by the Saints... They came back and won. The Panthers aren't a bad team, so to beat them is a big plus. It's not like they beat the Browns or anything. No, they beat the Panthers, a good team. Next week, they had the Cowboys. Who, no, first what, four or five weeks of the season, couldn't make a pass over five yards. Then last week, they destroyed the Jags' defense, 40-7. to What? So this game could be a 40-37 to high action, just so much... Offense going on, or it could be, yay! Dak Prescott completed his first pass in the second quarter for two yards on a third and nine. Or it could be again the barn burner, just touchdown here, touchdown there. Oh my God! There's been eight touchdowns in the first half. Oh, will things keep going like this in the second half? We'll have to wait and see. It could be a really good game. I probably won't be able to watch it because I'll probably at work, but. Yeah. Now, the teams that are bouncing back already. Not teams that can bounce back, but are bouncing back. The Texans. Yes, it was against the Bills. And the Bills got their quarterback hurt. But Sean Watson gets better every week. That defense gets slightly better every week. They keep this up. They keep pushing with the way the AFC South is going. It's just... Everyone's 3-3 three and three in the AFC South. All right. The Colts aren't, but the Texans, the Jags, and the Titans are 3-3. Three three. They're all tied with each other. So, Deshaun Watson gets a little bit better here. The defense gets a little bit better there. Playoff push. Then another team that's already bouncing back, the Cowboys. If they keep this up, could make a push for the playoffs. If. Big if. The biggest of ifs. Now, teams that can still bounce back, the Falcons. Never count them out. They like to sneak in as a sixth seed and go to the Super Bowl. Could happen. Then the Jags or the Titans. Just like the Texans, like I said, they're 3-3. Three three. They're good one week, suck the next. What will they do in the future? No one knows. Both of these teams, well, the Jags going to have to rely on their defense. The Titans going to have to hope Marcus Mariota comes back from his injury like, he's still not getting the ball out as fast as he used to. He's not still making those tight windows like he used to. He doesn't seem to be as confident in his legs as he used to be. So, if they can help Marcus Mario to get over that, the Titans could bounce back. The Jags can overcome the fact that they have Blake Borders as the quarterback. Why? 
you had so many free agents and trades you could have made and you went with this guy. Why? So the defense can figure out whatever the hell they were doing against the Cowboys and fix that. They could bounce back. Now, time for the rip. The Bills. If Josh Allen can't come back and they can't find a good backup, they're screwed. Even if Allen comes back, they're not making it to playoffs. But with him, 6-10, and 7-9, and nine, maybe even 8-8. Eight and eight. Could happen. Without him, maybe 3-13. and 13. And now, also rip, not a team, but a network. Fox has a Thursday night game. Broncos Cardinals. What a barn burner. I'm sure everyone in the country is excited for this. They're going to be on the edge of their seats. Or not. I'm going to go see a new movie instead. I'm going to go watch uh, Halloween comes out that night at the mall. So I'm going to go I'm going to go to the movie theater there and watch Halloween and review it. Cuz this uh, The Cardinals are not winning the West. The Broncos are not winning the West. The Cardinals are not going to make it in as a wild card. Broncos they're not going to make it in as a wild card. These are two teams that their playoff hopes are already over at this point. With the way the AFC is going for the Broncos, they're not going to be able to sneak in as a wild card unless they go on a huge, amazing run. And same for the Cardinals. With the way the NFC is going, they're going to have to be 11-5 and five to make it in as a wild card. If they're 10-6, and six, they may not make it. And I don't see them going 10-6, and six, so. Goodbye, Cardinals. Goodbye, Broncos. Goodbye, Fox. Of all, oh, like, why did this have to be the Thursday night game? Why couldn't this... Could you imagine this was Redskins Cowboys? This is Redskins Cowboys. Guess what? I'm going to be at my friends watching this movie. I am not going to the mall and watching a movie. I'm going to be with my friends watching this game. If it's Redskins Cowboys. Or, no, even Bears Patriots. That would be an exciting game to watch, I'm sure. See, the Bears can bounce back and have a healthy Khalil Mack. Instead, we get Broncos Cardinals. Sad face. Anyways, what do you guys think? Am I leaving a team off that should be on there? Did I put a team on there that shouldn't be on there? Maybe you could argue that the Redskins don't belong on there because they're 3-2. and two, But they have good wins. They also have bad losses. They're leading the East for now. And if they win next week, they take good control of that. If they lose, Cowboys can take control. Eagles could always bounce back. Maybe there's a team you think should be on here. If the Eagles win next week, they'll be on here. If they lose, they're going to remain off. And they might make it on to the teams that can bounce back. So, we'll have to wait and see. So, again, what do you guys think? As always, like, subscribe, comment down below, and have a wonderful day.